Welcome to Marketing and Coffee Hour. Today is March 2nd, 2023. Can you guys believe it's March already? I know. How is that it's possible? Crazy. So we have a special guest trainer today. His name is Andrew Fursa, and I forgot to get a Hello. bio from him, but he is the principal of Victor Vic Victor Video Service, and he was responsible for my number one most trending video on YouTube. <laughs> he recorded he recorded the video on you, my YouTube channel that had the most uh, views, aside from the ones that I did 10 years ago about breast cancer. Those were always, I mean, you can't, some of those videos have so many views, there's no way I'll ever have another video that goes, well, maybe I can't say that. I can't say that. Was that was that the hatchet video? Yes, the axe throwing video. He recorded that and made it slow-mo. And yeah. so I, um, I asked good. him to teach a class on how to use a video camera because I don't know how to do any of those things. I'm, I take pictures with my cell phone. Usually they're pictures of cats. Mm -hmm. I do most of my video recording from my webcam. I really do not know how to use the camera on my phone. So I am super excited to learn from Andrew today. Uh, we belong to the same BNI chapter. If you're in BNI and you want to have a one-to-one -one with Andrew, I'm sure he would be open to that because he's a groovy guy. And um, um, also his hobby is fingerboarding. <laughs> Yes, mini miniature skateboards. I have lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a really great guy. I'm really lucky to have him in my chapter, and I can't wait to learn from him. So what I would love to learn from him today the most is how to make sure the lighting on my cell phone camera is good. Um, sure. So I'm Candice. I'm in Michigan, and I want to learn how to make sure my lighting is good on my camera. Sounds good. So that is... Uh, so in the chat, I dropped a little link to my website. It's victorvideoservice.com. It'll redirect to raregdp.com, which is my college portfolio site I've had for about probably 10 years now, actually. Um, so you can kind of see my work there, kind of read a little bit about me and all that kind of good stuff. So if you want to do one-to-one, -one, please reach out. I'd love to do one of those as well. And uh, so one of the common issues it kind of sounds like is lighting. And um, you can fix that um, one of two ways. So everyone's got windows in their houses and that's really the easiest way to fix your lighting is to shoot in front of a window. So if you're doing a Zoom call, for instance, you know, you might want to like take your desk and actually put it in front of a window, reposition it. Uh, or if you're shooting like an iPhone video and your, your lighting's bad, just go stand in front of a window and you might just notice it's just it looks so much better. Uh, one other thing you can do is get a light. So here I have a compact light. It's about the size of an iPhone. You can get them at Best Buy or Target. They're really commonly available now. They only cost about, this, like this one was more expensive. It was about $60. $60. You can get ones for cheaper. And uh, it's pretty cool. It turns on different colors, different settings. It does like a police thing, which is kind of cool. And then it has a classic like bright white light. So you can put that, you know, anywhere really. And um, you can mount it on a tripod too, which is pretty cool. And that'll give you good lighting all the time. Uh, also, ring lights are really popular nowadays. You can get those at Best Buy as well. They're just, um, I have one in the other room. I should have grabbed it. It's just a ring-shaped light you plug in. They're usually under $50. They make them now where you can even, you know, prop them up on a desk. They have really compact tripods. I have one of a tall, I have a taller one. You can kind of take up like about five feet or you can compact it down to about a foot. So it's really maneuverable, really easy to use. And uh, you can dial in from like a cold setting to a hot setting or incandescent. So you can kind of get different feelings of lighting there too. So lighting is definitely really important. If your lights don't look good, oh, there, there you go. It looks like uh, Susan has a ring light there. And so as you see in the middle, it has a mount. You can even put your phone like, mounted right in the middle and then you'll have a perfect hands-free, perfectly lighted, um, you know, thing to, you know, uh, environment to film in. Highly recommend those. They're cheap, commonly available. They last forever, and uh, they're they're just great. Really easy to use. Um, so yeah, lighting is definitely really important. Seeing the reflection of my glasses. So that's actually pretty common. One thing you could look into is getting an ND filter or like some kind of filter for your iPhone. Uh, I'll drop a link in the chat to. I'm trying to think of a, I know there's companies that specialize in making them now. They're basically, they make them for cameras. You put them over a lens and they kind of cut down on glare or reflections. And now they make them where you can actually mount the ones made for cameras, like onto a, onto a mobile phone. Uh, so yeah, ND filters can definitely look into. Uh, I'll drop a link to the chat, or if you want to email me, I can give you the name of some that I have for my camera, or I can get back to you kind of some brands to look at. But um, a lot of people do have that issue. It's kind of pretty common. So um, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but um, so yeah, lighting is really, really important. If your videos don't aren't well lit or just don't look good to begin with, people are way more likely to kind of click off of it or disregard it. So like you're almost better off using stock video over your audio track. If you're sorry, I think my text keeps going off. If you're um, if your lighting's bad. 
Uh, another common thing is camera to computer. So I use, I work in, in a Mac environment. I have like an iPhone and a MacBook. So I'm not sure how many other people use, use that, but if you do have that same setup, AirDrop is the easiest way to do it because it'll, it'll link up everything over your network and you can easily select files from your phone and send them right to your computer. It'll pop up in your downloads folder, no problem. If you don't work in that environment, um, so I know there's a couple of people mentioned that use Android. Uh, Android's way more open source. So I think, I'm not sure if you can plug in a card into those, um, you know, an SD card into those phones. If you can, the probably easiest way to do it would be to pop them on the SD card and then pop that SD card into your computer. If not, there's probably some third-party apps like in the Android app store that would be comparable to AirDrop as to far as like, you know, getting them onto your computer. Um, so that's kind of, it can be, yeah, and then Candace mentioned Google Photos. That's also a really, really good option. You can use Google Photos, um, Mediafire, um, Dr uh, uh, Dropbox. They have mobile apps. So you can you can upload it on the mobile app, your content, and then you can log into that, log into your account on the computer and download them from there. Uh, Android to Mac. That's so there might be an AirDrop application in the Android in the Android store. It might be worth looking into. Um I'm honestly not sure on that one. So if you want to email me, I kind of I could do some research and get back to you on it. Um, I would definitely look into though the Google Photo solution. That might be the easiest one. Google Media Fire, Drop Dropbox. I know Media Fire gives you 10 gigs for free, and 10 gigs is like a lot to work with. Um, and it's really super easy. I think it's the more user friendly than Google, just in my experience. Um, so we'll definitely look into that one as well. So yeah, camera to computer that can be um, that can be technical sometimes, but there's definitely ways to do it. Uh, if your videos are blurry, so if your videos are blurry, I would recommend we'll get into it a little and we'll get into it more in depth. But try to avoid using the front camera as much as possible. The front camera is always going to be lower resolution. Uh, it's going to be a lower frame rate. Uh, if your lighting's not good, it's going to it's going to look even worse with the front camera. So if you can. Try to use the back camera as much as possible. The back camera has a much higher resolution, higher frame rate, and it just it looks a lot more crispier. Uh, one other quick thing is just to always wipe your lens off. So before you shoot anything, take your shirt, wipe off your front lens, your back lens, whatever one you're going to use, because that'll make a big, big, big difference. You'll be really surprised. Even if it doesn't look dirty, it'll, it totally makes a big difference. So wipe it off. Um, one other thing you can look at is your phone settings. So if you have an iPhone, in the top corner, you can't really see my screen, but in the top right corner, you see uh, it'll say HD or 4K, and then it'll, it'll have a little number next to it, usually 30 or 60. So if you're shooting something you need to slow down, I would recommend shooting in the 4K 60 because you want the more frames to be able to slow down. Um, but if you're shooting just regular video talking, you can probably just do 30 HD or 4K, but the, if you do HD, you'll, you'll save on space that way. So if you if you do a lot of videos, like I know Jeff Clatterbaugh makes a lot of videos of him talking to the camera, making lots of content that way. I recommend doing probably like the HD 30 or HD 4K because when you have a lot of those videos in your in your library, it'll take up lots of space. So if you minimize that space best you can, you can have more stuff and do more bigger library to work with. Um, let's see what else. So uh, night shots and close ups. So night shots are um, HD 30 or 4K. Slower speed. So for slower speed, you're really you're good with the HD 30, uh, HD 4K. If you want it to be a little more crispy, if you do want to do it, if you want to do a dedicated slowdown. So I know Candace mentioned her slow mo clip of her throwing the axe. I actually shot that with the slow mo setting on iPhone. I'm pretty sure Androids have that as well. Sorry, you can't see my phone. It's no point in showing it. But there's a slow mo setting, so you can actually go over a slow mo, shoot your clip in slow mo, and the whole thing will be slow mo. But you can go and you can go hit the edit button in the timeline and compress the slow-mo down to what you want to be slowed down. So a quick tip just to, before we move on is if you're doing a slow-mo, film the whole thing in slow-mo and then take the clip you want to actually upload, take that out and save it as a brand new clip. It'll get rid of a bunch of data you don't need. It'll save space on your phone and then it'll make the timeline a lot easier to edit because you'll have a lot more breathing room. So you can go from there and take your slow-mo to, to dial it in right exactly where you want it and it'll be just a lot easier to work with. I promise you that way. Um, for night shots, the, um, the, uh, the woman mentioned, uh, Marianne mentioned she lived in the mountains. I would highly recommend getting a, uh, a nice camera. You could, you'll do, you'll just be able to get so much 
so much of a better shot with a DSLR, even if it's like a lower end one, uh, anything you can change lenses on, you'll be, you'll, you'll be super stoked with, I guarantee it. Especially if you can go to a camera shop and talk to somebody, they'll kind of give you kind of personalized advice into what lenses to look into, what cameras to look into. Um, you could get a lot of really cool shots. Um, probably even start your own little Instagram account, get a following just from doing shots of the sky and the mountains like that. Um, if you're using just your phone, um, I would recommend doing the, just the regular photo one. You probably want to do the 0.5 zoom option if you can. So it pulls the camera out as far as possible. That way you get a super wide shot of the whole sky. Um, you want to shoot probably in the raw setting. So you get as much data contained in that image as possible. And um, that's probably about the best you can do on a phone. Uh, as far as close-ups though, there's a lot you can do. So uh, iPhone has a great zoom setting. You can zoom in super far. One other thing you can get though is Amazon sells these clip-on lenses for your phone. So you can get different kinds of lenses that will clip on your phone and give you different effects. And you can get different lenses. I, I have one specifically that gives you like a fisheye effect. So it's super rounded out. So the raw setting on the i on the iPhone, uh, if you go to your photos and you look in the top right, you'll see um, the word raw. It'll either have a, a strike through it or it'll just say raw. And if you shoot in raw, your photos will be a much higher, more data, much much more uh, higher quality. They'll take up more space. But uh, if you're doing landscapes, um, sky photos, anything where you need to capture a lot of quality, like a lot of anything comparable, do you want to like we would get with a DSLR? Definitely use the raw. So clip-on lenses, um, if you want to get some good close-ups, look into the macro clip-on lenses because with that and a phone, you can get some really awesome shots that I found were comparable to my actual um, like $2,000 camera setup with a $30 macro phone lens. Not the same frame rate or same, you know, not the exact same, but pretty, pretty, pretty close. So clip-on lenses are great to look into. You can get a lot done with those. Um, someone else mentioned reach on social media. So that can be a huge variety of things. I could talk for hours about that simple, about that one topic. But um, one thing you can do that I've been doing, that I've been taking advantage of lately is using viral sounds. So when you upload a video on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok, it'll give you a list of sounds that they kind of, or list of music rather, that they encourage you to use in your video. So these are usually songs that have like gone viral. They have millions of views, millions of plays. And you can kind of like, for lack of a better term, you can kind of grab onto their coattails and put that song in your video. And then when people search for that song, your video will come up in the list of ones that also comes up. So it kind of helps get your video out there as far as getting it inside the algorithm, getting it to kind of get hooked on to the computer wizards doing their work, whatever. Um, so viral sounds can be a big thing and it, you can even use them like, even if you don't like, even if you have a video of you talking, you don't want the music in there, bring the volume all the way down to like one. So you won't, you won't even really hear the song at all. It's just, it's just you doing your thing, but it will still get caught into the, into the algorithm and kind of get caught into the traffic and get pulled into things. Um, and if you, if you follow the rest of these tips too, like good lighting, um, and good camera quality, that'll also just help your videos get bigger better bigger and better reach uh as far as editing goes so we're super blessed lately with um um tiktok and instagram youtube not so much but instagram and tiktok actually have really really good in-app editors so the tiktok one is actually it's really good you can actually do a lot with it it's super like easy to use um it's like really user friendly but the instagram one you can get just as much done so if you're if you have a lot of clips of you talking and you need to make like a montage of you kind of talking over some clips or whatever, you can easily pop them all into Insta into the Instagram editor, clip out the ones you need, delete the stuff you don't need, and you'll be left with your video. And you can even download it from there too. So you can download it, upload that same video to Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, you know, wherever. And um, it's just a great kind of way to edit your videos within the app and kind of get things done quick and easy. I usually use Adobe Premiere, but that's kind of like a like a subscription service. And if you don't make videos regularly, you're probably not going to want something like that. But also look at Canva. I know uh, Candice has a lot of good results with Canva. Um, yeah, YouTube native editors, it's great. I use that one a lot. And the TikTok one, they're really intuitive and uh, really easy to use. 
Um, Instagram one is is probably Instagram or TikTok are probably my favorite. I know a lot of people are not a lot, not a big fan of TikTok. I'm really not either, but for some reason I get sales from it, so it keeps me it keeps me coming back. Um, live streaming. So if you're when you're live streaming, you definitely want to make sure you have the good lighting. Um, your sound is going to be important too, so you can look into getting like a a lav mic. They have them on Amazon for about thirty dollars super long like six foot cord you plug one end into your phone the other end you can clip on your shirt or just kind of hold it and it makes your audio just a little bit better you know a little lot better you know more crispy um and you can kind of control you know kind of where you're talking from too so you might dial in some you know some settings or whatever but it'll be a lot crisper that way and if you're live streaming too i definitely recommend that because the uh the signal can get kind of get chopped up sometimes um so what else and that kind of covers all the questions people ask so kind of we'll we'll get into the um the the stuff i kind of had plan to talk about now so does anybody have questions kind of as we're going on you can keep dropping stuff in the chat i'll kind of answer it as i see it but um i have a quick uh, question yeah what's up so i have the iphone 13 right uh -huh. and you talked about um look in the upper corner for raw yeah. How exactly do I do that again? So go to the photo, um, the photo selection and the like the like you're gonna take a photo and then look in the top oh. right. Okay, all you I see. have is like a, a little circle with a line through it. Click that. Oh you see okay. anything else come up? Just says like live. Picture. Just live. I'll look into it. Um okay. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh Karen, are you using your phone for Zoom right now? No, I'm not. Yeah, look into it. Um, I know you. It might, it might be in the phone settings too, so you might be able to go into the settings and then camera, and then I might have something enabled in my phone that allows me to take like a. Uh, uh, because I know when you enable raw, the pictures get really large. So it, the 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 phone actually warns you if you turn this on, the photos are going to get super large. So you might have to go in your settings and actually turn something on. I'll look okay. into that and kind of get back to you on it. All right, thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. Um, so when it comes to using the the camera on your phone, there's a million different things. If you kind of look, if you open up your camera on an iPhone, for instance, it's probably similar on Android, but there's it'll tell you you can take a video, a photo, a portrait, a panorama. Um, you can do cinematic, slow mo, or time lapse. So I'll tell you what, like ninety percent of the time, you're only going to be using video or photo. Um, if you're on vacation, you want to take a nice picture of a skyline. Sure, the panorama is great, but it's not something you're going to be using probably every day. Um, portrait is super, super flawed on um, on mobile phones. Same with cinematic mode. Cinematic is just the is the video version of portrait, pretty much. And all it does is it takes your foreground and and you know keeps it in focus and blurs out the background pretty heavily. But it's really it's really kind of flawed in mobile, and it kind of will mess up a lot. It'll take your hair sometimes and make it unfocused and focus on your your face and weird things like that. So I encourage not to really use those settings because they they take up a lot of data and they just they don't look, they don't look as good. They do sometimes if you have perfect perfect lighting, but a lot of times they just kind of don't. So ninety percent of the time I just use photos and video and the video setting. I do use slow mos though if I'm shooting something I need to slow down. So if I'm doing like a really cool bike video or something like kind of an action shot, a sports thing. Then I'll use slow mo, and then you know usually slow down a certain part of it if I kind of planned on that or anticipated it kind of when I was shooting. Um, so when it comes to photo and video, there's also a time lapse too. Time lapse I don't use too much, so I can't really tell you too much about it. But um, there's probably a need for it somewhere. So uh, how to process storage of videos? Yeah, so that can be a big issue. Um, I would definitely look into Mediafire or Google because the more you can move off of your phone onto like a a different environment will just make things a lot easier. Um, and then if you can move stuff on your computer too, then you can kind of start um, keeping stuff in a library and then moving stuff off of your phone. And then you can also look into getting some, uh, I don't have them handy, I have them over there, but it, you know, some uh, hard drives. So they make, they make even some now that are much smaller. Uh, they're much more affordable. I think like 60 bucks or 80 bucks at Best Buy for like one terabyte. And uh, as you get videos, move them on your computer and move them on the hard drive, and then they'll just be on there. So they won't be taking up space anywhere but the hard drive. So that can be a good a good space to kind of catalog your videos or kind of leave things. And I actually tag, catalog my whole, pro my whole projects on those things. So I'll take all the clips, all the titles, the project file, um, the contract, the proposal, just everything, all the info, put it on something, and then put it onto one of those hard drives. 
Um, yes, yeah, so you get the Mediafire app on your phone and then move things onto Mediafire from there. Do I use the cloud? Um, I do use the cloud sometimes, but to be honest, the Apple Cloud's like really bizarre. And I have a lot of Apple machines. I don't really understand what it grabs things from and they don't all share stuff. So I don't rely on it too much because it seems to be a little bit unreliable. Um, so you're mainly going to be using the photo and the video setting most of the time. Um, and with photo, um, like I said, you can, you can enable the raw setting in your settings. And let me look, just look into that for one second. I think it's just as simple as cl clicking a box in the camera thing. Uh, well, I can't find it. Either way, the raw is what you want to go for. You can turn the live off. I don't like using the live thing. I feel like it kind of makes things look a little bit like choppy. But if you're taking pictures of like your grandkids or whatever, it's probably more better to have more so you have more memories. Um, so maybe you want to leave that on. The flash can really depend on what you're doing. If you're shooting something like, indoors and it's like super dark and you can't put a light on then you probably want to use flash but a lot of times flash can make things just look like over processed or something and just bring out you know skin stuff so i i don't really use flash too much i think natural lighting just looks a lot better a lot just cleaner and more natural um what else is there uh you can dial in like the um the brightness and stuff if you like hold down on the uh, screen and you click, um, uh, you can, you'll can you see like a little sun pop up. You can click the sun and it'll kind of give you some more options. There's also a little flower in the bottom left. You can use that to get better macro shots. If you swipe up, it'll give you more options as far as um, your lighting goes, the size of your photo, things like that. I mainly shoot everything in just the phone screen size and crop later. One thing I learned in school is always to shoot wide, you know, crop in later when you need to. Um, let's see what else. So make sure your sound is clear. It's one thing we talked about. You can get a microphone. Make sure your angles are always good. So you can get a you get a, you can get a phone tripod. They make phone, they make tripods now dedicated just for phones. You can put them on your desk um, or, you know, they make full size ones. I would get one, though, because if you're not holding. Yeah, there we go. So Mary has got one. Looks like she's got a, a selfie stick one, too. That's really cool. Um, <clears throat> so. Your angles are really important. You want to make sure you're not obviously shooting from like, you know, people looking up your nose or down at you. And you obviously don't want to have your lights like, like you're in a scary movie. You know, you don't want to have your lights below you or, you know, right above you, obviously. So angles are super important, especially when you're, you know, kind of doing a talking thing and things like that. Uh, and remember, people love, they love learning and they also love watching. So even if you think like, your brand has no possibilities for video. There's always something that people like want to see you doing. So I remember me and Candace were talking one day about like, I told her she should just take her phone, set it up in front of her computer and capture her making a card. And I guarantee if one of you do that, that video will go viral, put a viral sound on it, show the process of you making a card, even if it's just you making it, not even just sending it, just you making a thank you card. Um, people love watching processes. So if you're making a cake, if you're making a card, if you're, um have a screen printing business and you make a lot of shirts Wh whatever your process says people would love to hear you would love to hear you talk about it but they also just love to see it happen people love seeing satisfying things just kind of happen and those videos always go viral like i'll spend hours <clears throat> working on something that i think will it will just go crazy upload it it'll get 20 views i'll take a video of me eating a star fruit and reviewing it and that'll get twenty thousand views in the course of an hour like so it's just the things you never expect that people end up wanting to watch. And um, so I would encourage you to make as much as you possibly can, because if you don't make everything, you won't find out kind of what works. So um, uh, what else is there? So I need to get some water. My voice is getting all uh, all froggy. Um, so yeah, it can be frustrating to put a lot of time into something and have it not kind of pop off, but just make everything, write down all your ideas and just and just make them because I don't, then you'll see what what will kind of kind of catch on. And you'll be surprised too, because like, um, I don't like TikTok that much, but I post videos on there just kind of because I started an account and it's kind of growing and I get 70% of my sales on my website from there. I don't really know how I don't post regularly on there, but it happens. So people you'll get. Andrew, you'll can get, you clarify what you're selling on TikTok so that the ladies don't all of a sudden start <laughs> going on TikTok thinking they're going to sell what they're selling? 
So I sell these little miniature ramps and things and I do custom uh, graffiti on them. I don't have any on this one, but um, I sell little fingerboarding ramps, stuff like that. So I make videos of me using them, videos of me making them, videos of me talking about them. And, um, you know, little, they act as commercials kind of for the, for the website. <clears throat> um, let's see, how much time do we have left? We have a half hour? About 40, uh, 20 minutes, to, no, 15 minutes. Okay, cool. And Andrew, sure. can you we'll recommend talk. some microphones? Yes, I'm sorry. I was talking in the chat. And I forgot to talk about it. Um, let me see the one that I bought. So I recommended the same one to Jeff, actually. Um, I, I got one on Amazon. It was pretty cheap, about 30 bucks. Um, sorry, I should have had that pulled up before. So the one I have is just the professional lavalier microphone. If you if you type in lav mic for iPhone, you'll see. Lav oh, is an L A V. I'll put a link to it. I'm okay, sorry. It's thank called, you. It's called Power D Wise Professional Grade Clip On Microphone. The reason I got it is just it's just a clip on one you plug in, so you don't need any extra software to use it. You can just use the. Um, let me send this link to myself and I'll, I'll send it to you guys. You can you can just use it as your, um, in your um, iPhone has a app called, what is it called? Audio recorder, I think it is. It's just, it's already on your phone. Um, of course, now I can't find it. Oh, uh, voice memos, I'm sorry, use voice memos. So you plug it in, open up voice menus, voice mem memos, hit record and it will capture all your audio kind of within there. And uh, it's like super, it gets super crispy, you know, on there. So on the iPhone, it can kind of just get a little, you know, grumbled or you can hear a lot of background noise. You can't hear any background noise, but use a microphone. Um, I'll send the link to Candace and she can kind of email it out. Cause I'm sorry, I can't get this handy off of here. Um, What's the name of it again? So it's called Power D Wise, P O W E R D E W I S E, all one word, professional grade lavalier clip on microphone. Sorry, it's so it. long. I'll, I'll put long. the chat, the link in the chat. Okay, thank um, you so and much. And before we move on from TikTok, yes. Okay, please understand the average age of a TikTok user is 16 to 34. All right. 80% are between 16 and 34 and their earning potential, like the, the average amount of money that they make is not high. I don't have the number here, but TikTok users don't make a lot of money, right? So when you're concentrating your effort on marketing and you are marketing a high-end product or, or marketing to salespeople, TikTok is not where those people are. So don't get sucked into something new just because Andrew uses TikTok. TikTok is a great place for him. It's not a good place for most of you. That's me being Candace. All right, Andrew, go on. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, TikTok is one I use to kind of push stuff out there. Instagram is also great. Instagram is like full of like kind of personalities and things like that. Um, so if you want to like, you know, show off your skills, you know, I would definitely do it on there as well. Um, and really the more, the more platforms you kind of cover, the bigger your reach kind of gets. And you'll be surprised like, the biggest, the biggest, 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 biggest thing when it comes to making videos and kind of creating a community around your brand is just uploading regularly. Um, and nowadays we have like the short form videos. I'm sorry, I need to get some water. Give me like two seconds. Think of some questions and I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> I don't mean to, to be mean about TikTok. I just, it's not where most of you need to be. So just, and <clears throat> Dai is right. You pick, pick a platform and upload it on a regular basis, but you know, then once you've picked your platform, you can recycle those videos. All right. Definitely. Um, yeah, regular, regularly uploading is like the biggest thing you can possibly do, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, or YouTube. I think YouTube probably, YouTube is the one I would, I would really uh, focus on. I think YouTube is the one that's kind of the most general, um, lots of personalities on there. And there's, the, so they have reels now. So reels are basically vertical videos. And these things just go, they go crazy because everybody wants short form content now. Nobody can watch things for too long. So they want to watch things quick and get their info fast. So um, yeah, Mary Ann uses TikTok to create the video and then repost. I do that a lot too. Their, their editor is, is really great on TikTok. 
Um, so short form videos are like the key now. And YouTube really, really pushes them heavily. Like if you have a channel about whatever and you make a short form video and a long form video, you'll see the short form video will automatically just get more views because the algorithm will want that one more than the long than the long form video. So if you make one a day and upload it regularly to your channel, I mean, I guarantee you your your thing will no matter who you are, what you make, what you sell, it'll it'll it will grow. People will start to come. It might take a while. I mean, it might take a year, two years, you got to be in it for the long haul, but people will start to come. And um, they don't have to be crazy videos either. I mean, like I said before, it can be a simple thing of literally you pointing your phone at the computer and making something, or you talking about something and telling a story. Those are the things that people go crazy for. And it can be even simpler too. I mean, on an off day, take a video of your cat and upload that. That might be the one that gets 1 million views and it might bring people to your channel and they'll watch the rest of your videos. Um, this morning I uploaded a video of the guys doing the work in front of our house. They're tearing, tearing up our street. And I, I, <clears throat> uh, subtitled it Michiganders getting shit done. It's 337 views. It's been what an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. So it's things yeah. like that, like that can just like, you know, make all the difference. And you might be surprised, like you might make a video about something random and that'll bring all these people to your channel. And it will end up, you know, wanting to use your product, your service and, and all that. And, um, yeah, pick your favorite one. And then, you know, when you make one, upload it to all of them. So no matter what editor or platform you use, like I would kind of water, you know, it's kind of kind of like having plants, you know, you want to water all the plants, you're probably going to, you know, water your favorite one the most. I don't know. It's kind of what I do with YouTube, at least like I upload on, on Instagram and TikTok and, and YouTube, but I upload on YouTube. That's what kind of like the baby up, upload there. I make sure I upload there daily and weekly and regularly and all that stuff. So you know, they're kind of like plants and you want to water your favorite one the most, but you want, if you water the other ones too, they'll, they'll also, they'll, they'll grow and they'll bring people to the other platforms. And, um, you can build a whole community, you know, around your, your business with, you know, with videos and, you know, or you're just with any social media account, really, even if it's just photos, um, like Marianne mentioned the, the sky photos, you live in the mountains, like you could have a whole following of people who just want to see your sky photos. Like I follow a guy who just posts pictures pretty much just like that. He has like 1 million followers or something crazy. And um, uh, your first love gets more attention. Yeah. So on that same topic too, like you want to make sure you're making videos of things you're actually passionate about, because if you're not passionate about it, people will be, will be able to tell, will kind of come across kind of just in the vibe. So if you're not interested in something, like don't make a video about it because people are going to totally, they'll totally get that. And, um, but if you are passionate about something, make notes about it, write down ideas and like make, just make the video. And one thing you can do too, is make the long video. Maybe you have a bunch of ideas or things you want to say and get out. So do that, tell that story the best, you know, the best you can. And, um, you know, take that and make it into like five or six short clips. So you can take the, you can take that video, upload it, and you'll have five also shorts you can upload to kind of be commercials for that, for that video. And uh, that'll really help bring people to your channel and kind of get your message out there. And it um, doesn't matter what you do. Like, it doesn't matter what business you're in. Like, people want to hear stories and see how things get done. Um, vlogs are huge. Like, if you have the attention span or the the um, the moxie, I guess, really, to film a vlog, like, people, really, they like seeing those. Um, trying to think what else, what else, what else. Um I think I pretty much hit only almost everything. Um, yeah, how, would you, how would you define yeah, a please. vlog at this point? I'm sorry. How would you defi define a vlog at this point? So you can do them in a lot of different ways, but I, I think they're really kind of just capturing your whole day, you know? So you're, you know, capturing everything you do from the minute, minute you wake up to the time you go to bed. And um, when I've approached doing them, I've always tried to pick like super exciting days where I have like, you know, jobs going on or events to go to, or just things that are kind of fairly exciting. Cause then I have something to kind of build the vlog kind of around. Um, but people like seeing those, you know, what people are up to and you'd be surprised people of all ages have vlogs. Like one of my favorite YouTube kind of vlogger guys, he vlogs his dinner every night and he's this, um, 85 year old, or maybe he's even 90. Uh, his name is, um, 
um, showman or theater man or I watched that you. video. I watched you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's 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 used to perform on Broadway back in like the 40s or 50s or something. Little old man, super humble. Kroger needs to sponsor this guy because he gets everything from Kroger. He's always plugging their their stuff, but um, he has like you know millions millions of views. I mean, he he definitely makes his retirement off this channel, and um, and yeah, you'd be surprised. People love stuff like that the more relatable it is the better that's why cat videos do so good that's why cooking videos food videos do so good because everyone needs to know how to know how to cook and um it's just super relatable and super general so the more relatable your video is the better it'll do it's kind of just like key for everything social media in general all right well we're we are at eleven forty-five. last call for questions yep kathy just a quick one. Um, yeah. When you were talking about trending audio, mm-hmm. was, were you thinking of Instagram? I missed that little part there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, audio. Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok all have like a built-in thing that they'll recommend sounds to you now. So you'll go to upload your video, edit it, and then they'll say, hey, do you want to add some sounds to it too? So if you look in that first page of things they recommend, those will be kind of the, the viral ones that are kind of popping off at that on that day or that week. And if you use those ones, your video is more likely to kind of get hooked into the algorithm, get used by the, or kind of get pushed more rather. So if you use those, and like someone said before too, you can even bring the volume all the way down to one or two where it's not even really audible, but um, it'll still kind of get hooked into the algorithm and get pushed more because the sound the sound is actually in there. Um, so you can use that a variety of ways. And I definitely recommend using sounds, even if they aren't heard, because, you know, they'll help your video just get out there more. Thank you. That's a great tip. Thanks. But yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Feature Man is his name. Feature Man. That's that's the that's his name, I'm pretty sure, is the oh. YouTube channel. I'll look it up and I'll have the link. Yeah. He's great. I He's, really yeah. enjoy watching him. He's awesome. Any other well, questions for Andrew? 